It's going to be a long year. Specifically two parts. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Batman The Long Halloween Part 1. Very much delayed apologies. I really meant to get to this a little while ago. But I'm still kind of hesitant. To, because of these Part 1, Part 2s that WB Animation has done in the past, most of the time they're not exactly worth it. The one time I would say that there's always been a good part one and a part two was The Dark Knight Returns. But every other one that they've done afterwards is coming kind of eh. And this one, despite having that kind of sense of feeling in the plot, I will still say that I am very impressed with the visuals, the audio, and the voice acting. This is probably one of the better caliber films that WB Animation has made in a while. And it's because they chose this specific kind of animation style that has hints of Tim Sale's work, but it's not entirely reliant on him, but it still follows a lot of what his artwork was. The Long Halloween is probably my favorite Batman graphic novel of all time. If I were ever to tell anyone what's a quintessential Batman graphic novel you should read, it's this one. Literally the embodiment of what every single Batman movie, TV show, or whatever is trying to do. It's one of the best Batman stories ever written, and the artwork is absolutely incredible. I got to meet Tim Sale a while back when conventions were still a thing, but yeah, no, the artwork in this book is iconic to me, and... I enjoy this story so much because it's such a good mystery. And we are seeing Bruce Wayne, Batman, in his infancy still, in terms of being Batman. He's been it for a little while, but he's still learning the ropes, and he actually still gets his butt kicked in a few scenes. Probably one of the better aspects of Netflix's Daredevil is that Matt Murdock would continually get his ass kicked. It made you feel for the character, it made you worry for his life. Same thing happens in Long Halloween. There are a few action scenes in this film, but really there's one very good fight scene. The animation fluidity is very well done. Batman actually gets hurt. He gets beat down. He makes mistakes and that kind of resonates with the whole story and that's what makes it more enjoyable in terms of a Batman story. Most stories he's 100% right with everything most of the time but this one he's still making mistakes to the point where it costs lives. And how is Jensen Ackles as Batman? He's alright. He's got the decent Batman voice. However, when he's Bruce Wayne, it's the exact same voice. He barely changes it at all, if at all. And that's something that I've always appreciated Kevin Conroy for, is that Bruce Wayne and Batman were two different people. You could tell from their voices. Batman was obviously all serious, no fun, whereas Bruce Wayne would have that slight facade of humor and lackadaisicalness but Jensen just does this straight voice throughout the whole thing every time he's Bruce Wayne I kind of get pulled out a little bit but when he's Batman he's decent I, I would say he's a decent Batman for sure the one that really surprises me actually is Josh Dunham as Harvey I think he does a really good job as Harvey especially with the turn that Harvey's going through in this story he's overworked with trying to take down the Falcone family, uh, the several attempts on his life in this film, as well as dealing with his fiance and the strife and the woes that they're going through as a couple. And you can start to see the gears are turning in terms of his turn, which is most likely gonna happen in part two, but it's still a really good setup. Of all the things that I would say I appreciate the most about this is the Harvey Dent story. It's being told very, very well. And then a final little roundup with the animation. Yeah, I think it's solid. I think it's very well done. I like how fluid it is. The jankiness is gone in terms of previous films. There are a few strange situations where they are reminiscing that of the frames from the comic. So all of a sudden when they cut, characters will change directory or it looks like that's what's happening. And it can kind of get a little awkward. It happens a bit at the beginning with Bruce Wayne and then with, uh, with Harvey Dent's partner. After that, it kind of fixes itself. Otherwise, the animation is tight. I would say I love the art style, I love the background 
uh, panels. I, I love the the overall templates. I think it's very, very cohesive to what they're trying to do. But then, as, as I said, the story doesn't really get going. Like Right when it ends, you're like, I want more, which is a good part one, I would guess, but really it kind of cements my thoughts about when this was coming out. I'm like, am I going to get the part one and part two? No, I'm just going to wait for when they put it together because that's what they should be doing. It's just what they do. They need to make money, so that's what they do. But in the end, I would say Halloween part one is a solid film. It's not the one you're going to rewatch over and over again. It's definitely going to be part two. So that's why it's going to get only a 4 out of 7 for me, but it's still a very solid 4. It's almost at a 5 just for all of the detail, but I want to watch the story, not just enjoy the audio and the visual aspects. There needs to be a little bit more meat to it for me to really gauge in. And I'm very excited though to see part 2. I am very excited to see it. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys for part two. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, We'll see you guys soon.